and so grateful today. And most of all, thankful for those of you who are joining us on our live stream or on Instagram live. We're grateful for all of you because we know even in this moment that worship is essential. And my prayer today is that you have been leaning into that space of worship in your home and wherever you are, you've been trusting God at that moment. Well, this is the time of our service where before we move into the word, we declare our statement of identity. Maybe never more has it been more necessary to be clear about who we are called to be and who we are in God's eyes. If this is your first time watching us on stream, they'll place our statement on the screen so you can read along with us wherever you are. Hopefully, if you're having a watch party or maybe having brunch, you can declare it in unison together. And we'll do that here in this sanctuary as well. So let's get ready. Come on, FCBC family. We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers, and doers who have been called by God to live the lives we are created to live, commanded by God to love beyond the limits of our prejudices, and commissioned by God to serve. Called to live, commanded to love, and commissioned to serve. And if you cannot remember all that, we have three profound words for you. And I know you're watching at home. What are they? Live, love, serve. Excellent. Excellent. I want us to look at a passage of Scripture today that I think is extremely appropriate given the times we are in right now. And so if you're watching us online or Instagram, let this be a moment you find your Bible app or get your Bible. If you're old school, get a Bible, Bible, Bible. Amen. And I want us to turn to the book of Mark. Mark 4, verses 35 through 41. Mark 4, 35 through 41. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture. Here's how it reads. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped, but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. They woke him up and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid have you still no faith and they were filled with great awe and said to one another who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him come on family let's pray God we thank you for this moment we thank you for this time we thank you, O God, for not only the gift of worship, but the opportunity to be in sacred conversation with you through prayer. Now, O God, we ask that you would let your word do its own work, and we'll be sure to give you all the honor and the glory, God, because you and you alone are worthy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we lift this prayer before you. And it is in your name we pray. We say amen. Come on, we're going to read that one more time. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? 
And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Even where you are right now, watching us, just give God some praise as we prepare even for this word. This passage of Scripture is one that I often reflect on and even refer people to when in times of crisis or social upheaval, people begin to think that somehow their belief in God and their faith protects them from the absurdities of life. We often believe sometimes that if we honor God, pray to God, read Scripture, serve, that somehow, somehow, through some warped theology and some warped teaching, that we believe that we are immune to the contradictions of life. It is a dangerous thing to cause people to believe that somehow when things begin to happen that may negatively impact them or afflict them, that somehow it is because they have no faith or somehow their faith is not where it ought to be. We do have those moments where we wane. There are moments when we gravitate in and up and in and out and up and down with our faith, moments when we're stronger than others, but at the core of it, our faith is what sustains us in those moments. It is not, again, that we will not go through anything. The good news is that we are not alone. This passage of Scripture is critical as you read it even today and look at it because here it is. The disciples and all those, it says, who are with them in other boats. The disciples in that moment are honoring Jesus' directives. Let us go to the other side. And while they're honoring the directives of Jesus, the Scripture says very clearly that a storm arose. Here they were being obedient to Jesus, but their obedience to Jesus doesn't prevent the storm from rising. So even as they in that moment are doing what they feel led to do because of their following of Jesus, even in these moments right now as we are doing what we are led to do, as we follow God, honor God, God, storms still rise. And right now we are experiencing a global storm With so many people are overwhelmed with senses of panic. People are praying. Churches are open even today where prayer is taking place. And yet we still believe. And yet we still get assaulted by life. Yet we still believe. And yet we still experience the absurdity of life. And yet we still believe. And yet we still experience the contradictions of life. And yet we still believe. And sometimes we experience sickness and pain and hurt. Wounds, damage, darkness, dysfunction, and yet we still believe. And these things still happen. Here they are, trusting Jesus, trusting that moment. And a storm rises. And instantly, they make a move in their thinking that would suggest somehow Jesus' disposition would suggest a lack of care and concern. They seek him out in the midst of a storm. Here is Jesus, their leader. Here is Jesus, the manifestation of human possibility. And in the midst of the storm, the one who bears the image of possibility and all of human possibility is sound asleep in the midst of a raging storm. And for them, it doesn't add up. How can he be asleep? Look at what we're going through. Look at what we're dealing with. How can he be asleep? Look at the waves overtaking us. The boat is almost overwhelmed. It is being swamped with water. And yet, with all the panic and turmoil and anxiety and fear that is rising in the boat, Jesus is fast asleep. Maybe Jesus understands in some way what we ought to understand intuitively is somehow fear can cripple us. Fear can cause us to revert back to old habits that, that undermine who we are. Fear can cause us to pause right where we are. Robin Sharma said something. She said, the fears we don't face become our limits. Oh gosh, I hope you hear that. The fears we don't face often become our limits. 
And you have to begin to look in your life and see those places and spaces where there was unfaced fear. And where you experience unfaced fear, you often experience your own limitation. The limitations are not set by sometimes external factors, but maybe the limitation is set by your fear. Think this past week, two weeks, how has fear limited you? What has your own fear caused you to do? How has fear stifled you? Stephanie Malachet, she says this, fear is an idea crippling, experience crushing, success stalling, inhibitor inflicted only by yourself. Oh, gosh, I got to say that again. Fear is an idea crippling, experience crushing, success stalling, inhibitor inflicted only by yourself. You are the one who hinders your progress. You are the one who minimizes your possibilities when you allow fear to gain a stronghold in your life. Fear really has two meanings. I read somewhere. Fear has one of two meanings. One that can be viewed as negative and one that actually can be viewed as positive. Either fear does this, is this. Fear is forget everything and run or face everything and rise. Oh, gosh. I hope you heard that. You forget everything and run or face everything and rise. What choice are you making this week? Will you run? Or will you rise? That's the real question as you face these uncertain times. Will you flee or will you fight? Will you forget or will you remember? And in that moment, when they begin to cry out to Jesus, they raise a question. Leader, teacher, don't you even care? Don't you care? Don't you see what we're going through? I know that someone this week has even said that in their own spirit. Strong people of faith. God, don't you even care? What is happening? What is going on in our world? When they raise that question to Jesus, Jesus rises from his sleep. I should always interject, or also interject at this moment, that sometimes fear can cause sleeplessness among the fearful. Yeah. Notice that Jesus is sleeping. They are awake. And Jesus couldn't have been the only one who was tired, but he was the only one sleeping because fear did not grip him no matter what the storm was saying. Yeah. And so in that very moment, Jesus now rises from his slumber and looks at the disciples and raises the question, where has your faith gone? I already said earlier that there are those moments where we have those temporary lapses where you forget what has happened. And sometimes it does make sense. Watch this. Can I give you a model where it makes sense? And you may be thinking, Pastor, you just said that fear, fear really ought not stifle. And now you're saying there are moments where fear makes sense. Yes. Can I give you the moment? Here they were on the ship with Jesus. They had seen Jesus' power that God had poured into him. They had seen the power of God manifest in him. They saw blind eyes restored. They saw limbs restored. They saw things that they never thought they would see. And they are on the ship with the one who allowed them to see what they never thought they would see. Now watch this, and fear still grips them. Fear does make sense. Can I give you this? Fear makes sense if you were not present with God, or God was not present with you. I can understand your trepidation if you did not feel a sense of God's presence, but here they were on the ship with Jesus, and in that moment, knowing God's presence and knowing the presence of God in your life, something is antithetical to the presence of God when you allow fear to cause you forget that God has been walking with you every step of the way, every moment of your journey. You ought not be fearful when you know you are not by yourself. Even right now at home, I don't care what the anxiety may be, you are not by yourself. You are not alone. You are not the only one who's even feeling the way you feel. There are communities being gripped by panic. Families being manipulated by fear. You are not alone. But you're also not alone when it comes to recognizing the presence of God in your Life, will you flee or fight? Will you run or rise? What will you do? Jesus comes above the ship. 
Then he looks at them and he begins to question them. Don't let this moment cause fear to rule. Let your faith reign. Fear wants to rule, but faith has to reign. Fear wants to stop, but faith ought to cause you to keep pushing. Fear wants to hinder. Faith causes you to overcome. What will you choose today? Jesus now, after addressing the disciples, the scripture says, he begins to speak to the elements. He speaks to the storm after he speaks to the storm dwellers. He speaks to the storm. Peace, be still. But what if those words had multiple targets? What if he spoke to when? What if he spoke to see? But what if he also spoke to them? Peace, be still. Maybe he wasn't even speaking to peace because it might seem that. Peace and be still. Let peace abide. And let that peace cause a stillness in your soul so that your spirit doesn't erupt with panic and fear. Be still. Maybe that's why the writer in the Old Testament said, be still and know that God is God. Know the presence of God. Peace, be still. And maybe even right now, you feel this inclination in the midst of what you're feeling. Just slow down. Take a deep breath. Remember what you've come through. Remember what has kept you. And even right now, even if you've got to pull out a piece of paper, write it down, put it on your refrigerator, put it on your phone, put it on your laptop, put it somewhere where you can see it, put it in your bathroom, write it on the hallway, put post-its in the room. Peace. Be still. So that wherever you go, you're reminded of your responsibility and your obligation, and that is to rest in the peace of God to be still in the peace of God. Peace be still. And can I tell you this? If wind and waves know how to obey, we ought to know how to be still in our storms. Here's, here's what I know. Storms don't come to stay. They come to pass. And don't let a passing storm shift your permanent disposition. Don't let a passing storm cause you to lose focus on who you are. This ain't the first time fear entered your spirit. And guess what? It won't be the last time. And if you know that it will come again, I was watching TV last night and, and there was a virologist and, and an immunologist saying that, that, that there are going to be other viruses that come that may be even worse than this one, which means that this may not be the worst that we may see in our lifetime. Something else may come, but here's the key. No matter what comes, what's your position? Where do you stand? Lean into the peace of God. Lean into the stillness that God has created so that your soul is fortified even when people are collapsing and crippled in their beliefs and their spirit and their strength all around you. No, this is not a season where fear ought to rule, faith ought to reign. And Maybe right now it means you need to be still and walk in the peace of God. Someone asked me, we did our men's retreat this past week, and I was asked, are you still going to go given your health condition? In case you don't know, I need to tell you, and those who are watching, I have a, 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 a condition. I don't want to say disease. I hate that word, but I'm going to say condition that keeps me immunosuppressed all the time. I have very little antibodies, which means I don't really have a strong immune system. And someone asks me, are you still going to travel? Are you still going to fly? Even though you know you're vulnerable. I told them, I said, well, I'm going to take precautions and I'm going I'm to use sanitizer. And, 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 and one of our trustees, Ebony, told me, you know, 
alcohol is good. And so I had my spray bottles and my sanitizer. And when that ran out, I had my alcohol. And I was, and I got to tell you, I know I'm not the only one because now you got a new crisis because as much sanitizer as you may have purchased this week and as much alcohol you may have been using, make sure you get some lotion because it is a, a sad thing to sit around here and be ashy because of anxiety. Right? 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 So, 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 so I said, I'm going to do what I need to do. I, I'm, I'm going to spray. I'm going to use a sanitizer. I'm going I'm to use a lotion. And then I'm going to wear my mask that I got. I'm going to do what I need to do. And then I'm going to trust. Not only what I do, and I got to be faithful in what I do now. I can't, I can't just haphazardly do it. I got to be consistent round the clock all the time. I mean, I'm telling you, I've gone through bottles of sanitizer. I've gone through uh, spray bottles of alcohol. Like every time I think about it, I'm just squirting and squirting and squirting. I saw this week that there was a young man who got suspended from school because he was selling squirts of sanitizer. Lord have mercy. But once I do everything I need to do, I got to trust that the universe knows who I am. And that, and that once I do what I need to do, the trouble won't last always. Once I do what I need to do, this too shall pass. Once I do what I ought to do, I realize that there will be days where weeping does endure, but joy still comes. And that's what I put my focus on every now and again. In the midst of this moment, pause, be still, reflect, and press forward. And remember, like the folks used to say when I was coming to church, God didn't bring you this far to leave you. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. And can I tell you, Paul said this, nothing can separate you from the love of God. And I know this, coronavirus can't separate me from the love of God. Be cautious. Do what you have to do, but then trust that the universe will begin to orchestrate. Peace. Be still. Let that be your motto during this time of chaos. Peace. Be still. Let that be what you hold on to during this season of social turmoil. I saw a clip on Twitter where in Italy, down one of the corridors, and in several of the corridors, in the midst of the lockdown, in the midst of those who've been dying from Kavona, people opened up their windows and started singing. In this one video, there have been several of people singing in Italy, but they were singing some hymns from the church. They opened their windows and assaulted the insanity with songs of praise. They opened their windows and started lifting up words that lifted their spirits. Maybe you need to assault the insanity with your stillness and your voice. God is an everlasting God, and I belong to God. And if you need something to keep you this week, in addition to declaring, peace be still, maybe you remind yourself of one of FCBC's affirmations. I am the beloved of God. God's spirit rests on me. And in me, God finds favor. I am the beloved of God. God's spirit rests on me. And in me, God finds favor. I'm powerful adaptable, unshakable. I am the dawn and the dark. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And this season that we're in is bigger than you. But what we need and what we need right now requires you. It requires your faith. It requires your belief. It requires your trust. And here it is. Because of who you know God to be, fear is not final. It does not have the last word. It cannot have the last word. Where fear tries to build a wall, 
Faith surrounds fear and minimizes its impact. Fear is not final, brothers and sisters. Trust that. Wherever you are right now, just join me in a word of prayer. God, we thank you and we honor you even in this moment right now. God, we pray for those who are under quarantine right now. We pray, oh God, that they feel your presence and know that they're not alone. We pray now, oh God, for those families whose loved ones have been infected with this virus. We pray now, oh God, also for those families who may have lost loved ones around the world. We lift them up. God, we even lift up the leadership of this country that it would do the right thing. Do the right things, oh God, to protect this land. But then, oh God, we as people of faith, I pray that we pray, that we trust, that we don't just pray, but we speak confidently to the elements that seem to be working against us and stand in that confidence. And maybe, oh God, we need to even speak to the virus. Peace. Be still. But God, this is one more opportunity to create a new memory because there will come a point when these days have passed and our souls will look back and wonder how we got over. We know how we made it. It's because of your enduring presence. Lord, we love you and we honor you. So let us together, God, all of your children, let us, God, walk boldly and courageously, even into the dark, even into the uncharted waters, but trusting in your presence. Bind the turmoil that rumbles in our spirits. Grip the chaos that may abound in our culture. Do whatever you need to do, oh God, to get the glory in this moment. God, we love you. God, we thank you. And God, we honor you. We lift this prayer before you. In your name, we pray. Amen. On the night when Jesus was with with his disciples and they celebrated the Passover together, what we now call even our Last Supper. It says that when they had finished celebrating Passover, they went to the Mount of Olives and they sang a hymn. I remember years ago, my pastor preached a sermon on that passage. After that, he called it closing on a high note. That when the Passover was over, they came together and they left singing. Well, guess what, family? We're going to leave singing today. And so our praise team is going to lead us in one more song before we leave you today. And then Pastor Kendra is going to come and close us out. But remember this, fear is not final. Where fear tries to rule, faith has to reign. Peace and blessings. Come on, praise team.